Hello boys, welcome back to another session of video tutorials and this session is meant for class 11th biology students and this is meant for 23rd October 2020. As I promised you yesterday, we have been revising the syllabus and, and we are also dealing with the practicals related to theory. So as part of it, we are going to study and reflect upon exercise 11 that is an experiment that you need to perform once you come back or in case it's not possible then you need to do it at your own home or virtually but you should know the background of this experiment since yesterday i was telling you that for your batch solen ac is not there only either fab ac or lily ac you have to perform so what is the aim to study and describe flowering plants of families fab ac and lily ac what is the principle involved principle is taxonomy taxonomy deals with identification nomenclature naming classification of organisms this is the principle so you need to identify a member of the fab ac or lily ac nomenclature you need to give a name binomial nomenclature and classify it and when you classify it what is the logic behind it so bentham and hooker's system of classification is universally used for classification of plants field identification of plants is based primarily on morphological features that's why we said the very chapter's name is Morphology of Flowering Plants. So here, based on morphology, we are doing. And of course, when we talk of the morphology, invariably it goes without saying that floral characters are involved in that. What is required for this? Of course, as I said, you can do it, this experiment in your own home. Locally available plant specimens of, as I said, solness is not there for your batch, either Fab AC or Lily AC. Minimum three species of each family other than the ones described for reference in the manual. Of course, you don't worry about it. Whatever is available within your native place, you can do it. Each specimen should have at least a small branch with a few internodes, leaves, flowers and fruits. Glass lights, cover glass, water, hanamel beakers, petri dish, razor, blade, needles, brush, hand lens, dissecting microscope and compound microscope. Of course, when you go for the anatomy, then only you require the dissecting microscope and compound microscope that once you come here, we can do it. Morphology, of course, morphology part of it, you can study at home. So keep procedure. Now third heading. So first one is aim, second is materials required. And of course, in between principle involved and fourth one now procedure. Keep the twigs in beakers containing water so that purpose is the twigs will not become dry. Make yourself familiar with the terms given to describe the habit of plant. Of course, since we have covered this twice, the chapter morphology of flowering plants through videos we have covered. I am sure you all must have watched the videos. Second, for the last 3-4 days we have been revising this chapter. Revision was going on. I am sure you are very familiar with the technical terms that are there in this chapter. So that should be in your background. At the back of your mind, all these technical words must be there. Its root, root system, stem, leaf, inflorescence and flowers. Describe the vegetative and floral features of the plant in the same sequence using terms described therein. Observe the flower bud under dissection microscope or hand lens and note the estivation pattern of calyx, corella, number of sepals, number of petals, is it 3 or 4 or 5, how many, okay, sometimes it will be poly also and the number of stamens, so this I think morphology part of it you can do it, so pick up a flower, observe how many sepals are there whether the sepals are free or joint okay second petals how many petals are there numbers 
are they joined are they free okay so that gives you that so and the third goal is the stamens how many stamens are there is it monodelphus or didelphus that you can know and then remove all the peta sepals petals and stamens what you get is the carpel so in the carpel you just see the stigma style and ovary this is the morphology part of it and to know the to satisfy the curiosity you can take a blade and cut the the ovary part of it of course uh, you virtually you may not see accurately but with your naked eye you can see how many locules are there locules can be seen okay that you can try but once you come to our lab then we can see the sections both uh, vertical as well as uh, uh, transfer sections under microscope so ls of the flower cut the ls of the flower longitudinal section of the flower place it on a slide and observe under dissecting microscope to study now position attachment of stamens is it opposite alternate to petals free or epipetalous extros intros anthers anther lobes in the bud face away from axis extros another lobes in the bud face towards the main axis intros so these are all the technical words and number of carpels how many carpels are there is it monocarpel bi tri how many carpels are there then position of the ovary is it epigynous perigynous hypogynous all these three we discussed yesterday mount a stamen on a slide and study the attachment of filament to anther is it base fixed dorsi fixed versatile adnate dissection pattern of anther is it porous longitudinal number of anther lobes is it monothecus or dithecus mount the pistil and study the ovary style stigma also cut a transverse section of the ovary to study the number of locules and then placentation write the floral formula based on your observations and draw the floral diagram of each specimen based on the observation that you have done identify features of different parts of the flower on the basis of description given in table 1.1 so you table it it now under observations what you do you put a table compare the characters with those given in the table and identify the family to which the plant belongs to this is your result based on the observations you are going to write your result and then after writing the result precautions what are the precautions you take so basically this exper- experiment consists of the following headings first and foremost i feel you must write the aim of the experiment second principle involved in that in that uh, experiment and uh, third one is the is the materials required what are the materials you require fourth one is the procedure what is the procedure you follow and then fifth one after procedure is the observations observations can be tabular after observation it is the based on your observation you are having conclusion or result after conclusion or result what are the precautions that you take while performing this experiment so precautions and in higher classes when you go to universities of course there will be what you call inference so at present we will not take up that inference we will restrict up to 7 so for any experiment that you are doing in class 11th and 12th these are the headings that you should follow in this as i told you already the procedure part of it that is this one you must write in the past tense point wise why since you are performing the experiment you need to write in the past tense plus if you write point wise it's very easy that means concept is clear instead of writing a story there and then observations also since you are observing so write point wise past tense of course result or conclusion can be either past tense or present tense it is left to you precautions are again present tense so this is what you must do and at the end of the experiment now the most important one is there that's called viva the external examiner who will be coming uh, from outside he will be asking you 
certain questions related to this experiment as well as theory part of it so that he wanted to ascertain that whatever you have written is your own you are not copied or you are not mugged up just you are not you are not done rote memory and vomited not that so why your questions will be there like questions draw the floral diagram and write the floral formula from the below given description of a flower so now bisexual flower actinomorphic hypogynous five sepals gamosepals petals five free imbricate estivation six stamens arranged in 12 whorls ovary superior trilocular axial placentation see for every one you must know what it is when i say bisexual flower what is it when i say actinomorphic or zygomorphic what is it what is hypogynous epigynous perigynous flower okay so sit calm and write down take a notebook and write all the technical words related to this chapter and this experiment then you will be able to understand better in which type of placentation would the ovary be always unilocular what do you mean by unilocular as the name says one locule inside the ovary if a flower is epigynous what is the position of floral parts so if you know what is epigynous epi upon upon present ovary is upon what is the fruit what in the fruit is equivalent to the ovule of the ovary so technically what do you call a ovule so these are the questions likely questions that will be asked by your external examiner or sometimes internal examiner also to ascertain that you know it you understand what you are doing so these are the things that you must keep it in your mind while performing the experiment so keep this in mind and when you come back you need to have separate record for this and in the record you have to write the following headings and you, you know in the record you have got one side uh, uh, pages with the lines and another side uh, it's a white paper okay no, no lines so on white paper side you have to draw the diagram like a flower vertical section of flower you have to draw you have to draw ts of ovary transverse section of ovary you have to draw vertical section of stamen and then you have to draw floral diagram and then you you need to draw you need to write floral formula this many will be on white sheet and rest all whatever you are describing under aim principle involved materials required procedure in the past tense point wise observations point wise past tense result present tense or past tense or conclusion and precautions in the present tense and of course viva questions you need not it's oral so this is how you need to write we'll continue with this uh, experiment how to do it in the next day also tomorrow session right until then keep practicing